I feel like we're getting to a point where we aren't really seeing that many meaningful differences between generations of phones. So the iPhone 13 just came out and it doesn't really seem that much different than the 12. There are some AI differences in the cinema camera mode where it kind of has the fake blur on the background and that's all cool and everything, but I wanted to go back a little bit and compare some other cameras throughout time and throughout technology that I think deserve uh, another shot at uh, being possibly used for a camera. So starting off, we have the iPod Nano 5th generation from 2009. It does have a 720p camera on the back and a little, little tiny one. I can't really see it too well. But it also has a built-in microphone as well, and you can see everything being recorded on the screen here. Next, we have the Nexus 5 from 2013. It also has a pretty large camera with a flash built in as well. I believe it shoots in 1080p video and is probably not going to be the best quality, but I'm sure it'll be better than the iPod Nano. Next, we have the OnePlus 8T with the Hasselblad sensor and cameras. This will be kind of the, the flagship end, or at least close to flagship end of the smartphone era. I don't have any iPhones or anything else like that that I can compare, so I'm just comparing what I have today. I will also be shooting in 1080p on the phone just to make a little bit of a fair comparison. And then finally, I have my Sony a7C, which is just gonna be completely off the rails in terms of quality, and you'll really be able to tell the difference between the phones and the a7 especially uh, if I'm shooting in 4k which I'm not I'm only going to be shooting in 1080p on the a7c but we should still see a pretty big difference especially in the bokeh in the background getting a nice creamy background distance while the 8t the iPod Nano and the Nectus not gonna have that good of quality but I'm just curious to see how that's gonna work out I'm going to have a couple different varieties of subjects and ways to film. First one will be just a static shot of a product on a table using the lighting setup I've got here just to make everything absolutely fair. Everything will be shot in as close to the same focal length as possible at 1080p or at least the max of what you can get. I believe the iPhone now has 720 so we'll be shooting 720 in there. Next we will have a walking shot that's supposed to be tracking the subject going forward, backward, and around to give you a sense of any kind of stabilization in each platform and how well that works. The A7C does have in-body stabilization up to five stops. The 8T will have, I believe, the best stabilization with the optical image stabilization on the main camera as well as digital stabilization. Nexus 5, not really gonna do that well. And the iPod Nano, I think, is probably gonna make some people a little sick, kind of like when uh, Cloverfield was released and people went to theaters and were so disoriented by the shaky cam they couldn't really finish the movie. So we will test all of these out and see what looks the best. I'm gonna be having this as a blind comparison, see if you guys can actually figure out which one is which, and then I will put the labels on the videos afterwards, see if you got any correct. Uh, I would imagine most of you will get, I probably three Three out of four of these right. The only real difference is probably going to be between the 8T and the Nexus, but even then, I don't really think it's going to be that fair of a shootout. But we are going to see what these turn up with in a good old fashioned shootout. All right, first up, we have camera A. Looks pretty overexposed. Uh, the sharpness looks like it's a little too much. I'm not a huge fan of it. Camera B, I think we all know which one this is. Stabilization is pretty much non-existent. Uh, resolution is pretty terrible and the exposure is way off. Camera C looks a lot better. You can see the nice creamy bokeh in the background. You can probably tell exactly which one this is. And the sharpness is pretty good as well. Handles light very well. This one actually surprised me. Uh, I did not expect this one to do this well until it starts auto adjusting and then it kind of loses everything there. Next we have the tracking shots. This one I kind of messed up, but you can see the, the, the correct camera in the corner there, but I don't think there's any really question as to what this is gonna be. You do have a nice amount of stabilization there. Even handheld looks moderately okay. Could probably be fixed with some post stabilization as well. Uh, autofocus remains pretty good. Second example, I think we all know exactly what this is, unfortunately. Uh, really hunting with that exposure, not really able to figure out kind of which area it wants to focus on so it just kind of overexposes everything really see the amount of differences in that plus the next one this one i think was probably going to be the most difficult in terms of figuring out which one it is stabilization looks to be the best but the camera quality is still not that great i would say there's a lot to be desired especially in the exposure and the way it hunts for that exposure trying to get it to the correct levels not my favorite this one 
struggling hard with autofocus. I did have to try to focus on there, just give it a little bit of a chance. And then every time after that, you see it's really hunting for that exposure, not really sure what it's supposed to be focusing on. I think that white bottle in the background is doing most of the uh, issues that it's having with. Just using a jar of Jif, just because it, it's kind of colorful. Figured I'd try something out. Um, this is this is going to be a little bit wobbly just because I'm not perfect in holding things. Um, I don't really have a, a holder for this, so that's just what we're going to use for now. Get a good 20 seconds of that. All right. Now we're going to go to the Nexus. Looks like the back camera does go to 1080p, so we're going to shoot in that quality just to get a sense of how it looks. I did tap on the GIF to try and get the right light sensitivity, but it actually went out of focus, so let's try to focus that on it. There we go. So it looks like the Nexus does have a fair amount of uh, extra resolution that we can work with, and then being able to, oop, looks like it's kind of struggling with staying with the same levels. Next up we have the OnePlus 8T, going to be shooting in 1080p as well, just so we can make it as fair as possible. It's 8T, it's 1080p at 30 frames per second. You can really start to see the image stabilization coming on in the 8T. Looks much, much more stable. Actually, I should stand the same way I was standing before. Even then, looks a lot more stable in terms of what we're able to get. All right, now we're going to do the A7C filming with my uh, 8T, hello. Try to get 20 seconds of just regular old 1080p action on the A7C. I can already tell the bokeh is going to be a lot better. I am going to change the aperture just a slight amount to make sure we get the right lighting. Looks like that's a little bit better. It was a little overexposed in the first one. And just get a good 20 seconds of that. In body stabilization does look like it's doing a pretty good job. And let's cut it at 20, there we go. So there you have it, those are the results. Let me know in the comments if you got all of them correct. I will say I was most shocked to see that the 2013 Nexus 5, in my opinion, looked better than the 2019, 2020 8T that is two to three times the cost of the Nexus 5. That just blew my mind. Um, I don't know what it is about the 8T, but it just doesn't look good. It's too sharp, but also not sharp enough. And so it's just this weird middle ground. The colors just look super weird and washed out. The Nexus 5 actually looked a lot better in terms of contrast and getting the full array of the color. It seemed to struggle a lot with getting the exposure down. You see it kind of going in and out in terms of overexposure and underexposure. I think a lot of that had to do with this water bottle here just being a little too white. But I was just honestly a little bit shocked that, uh, a 600 something dollar 8T that's pretty much brand new was outperformed by a Nexus 5. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I'd love to know your opinion in the comments down below. Do you think the Nexus 5 looked better than the 8T? Um, I think we all know the iPod Nano looks like absolute trash, which makes sense. It's just such an old phone and it's only shooting in 720p. But I was actually pretty surprised at how good the audio quality was. All the audio was shot in camera of the Nano, the Nexus, the one plus and the a7c on that last batch of videos where i'm actually talking doing the voiceover so another thing to look for would be which camera has the best in audio and it seemed like the nexus was trying a little bit too hard to get that noise canceling in the background i was surprised how good the nano was in terms of the audio quality and then the sony a7c was definitely all right um, i'm not really that impressed with the audio quality on the 8T. They put a lot of money and effort into these Hasselblad cameras and the microphones, and I was pretty let down by the 1080p on the OnePlus. Obviously, it's going to be shooting in 4K most of the time, which is going to look a lot better, but just in this little test here, shooting 1080p with the OnePlus, the Nexus, the Sony, and 720 on the Nano, which obviously looked and sounded the worst, I was the most surprised between these two. If, if you shoot 1080p side by side with these two, in my opinion, I'm going to choose the Nexus 5 every single time, or at least in these tests right now. It might be different in terms of real-world comparisons with outdoor lighting, natural lighting, stuff like that. But in terms of just this little test right now, I would say besides the image stabilization being obviously much, much better on the 8T, the Nexus 5 actually looked a lot better. Um, let me know in the comments down below if you think it did or did not. Which one do you think looked the best? Um, was it the A7C, which is a 
$2,000 camera versus about six or $700 phone. Uh, I would say like a two or $300 phone, and then, I don't know, a 50 or $100 iPod Nano. Which one do you think looked the best? And would you like to see any other comparisons in terms of pictures? I also have a DJI Osmo that I could throw into the mix, although that would be a little bit different just because the focal length and the, the field of view on the cameras is gonna be wildly different. But I could do a shootout between the ultra wide on the one, plus 7T and the Osmo and see which one has the best ultra wide. And I could also throw in the A7C as well since I do have an ultra wide camera or a lens on that one as well. There you go, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you thought, what were you voting for, which one you thought looked the best. Do you think you would actually choose the Nexus over the OnePlus in terms of 1080p quality? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you next time.